Welcome to my workshop. It's great to have you back. But it is time to make some changes around here. You see, the layout of this place is far from optimal. Here, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so we'll start over here by the bandsaw. This bandsaw is literally just placed here because that's where I put it when I got it. And it's been here ever since. Which means that right now, the bandsaw is right next to where my computer is, where I sit and edit videos. And no, it's not a great idea to have the tool that generates the most amount of dust in the workshop next to my computer, which is probably the most sensitive to dust in the workshop. And also, right next to my computer, mm, I've got my Bridgeport milling machine, which I guess also doesn't like a ton of dust. And then over in this corner, we have that situation. I don't know what to say, but this is where I store all my plywood and leftover wood from other projects. It's not pretty, it doesn't work very well, it takes up a ton of space, so we definitely need to do something about that. So the plan for today's video is gonna be all about optimizing the workshop, moving the big machines around, and then building smart storage solutions for the things that now just start scattered around the workshop and take up a ton of space. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Let's get started. So before we start moving stuff around, let me just give you a quick update on what the plan is. So right now, the two big metalworking machines that I own, the mill and the lathe, are on opposite sides of the shop. And that doesn't really make any sense. So my plan is to get rid of that big mess in this corner here, stick the mill in the corner and the lathe right next to it. That in turn will free up all the space on that wall so we can take the bandsaw and put it where the lathe is now, which is a good thing because then it will be far away from my computer and where I edit videos. And talk about where I edit my videos, I wanna build a raised floor here with storage underneath, kind of similar to what we built in the kitchen in one of the earliest episodes. And then last but not least, we need somewhere to store this wood in a way more organized way. So we're gonna build a storage solution behind the bandsaw, that way I have the most amount of distance between all the woodworking stuff, all the metalworking stuff, which will be in the corner here, and then my computer slash office area over here. Okay, time to move some heavy stuff around. Okay, and now to the first challenge. Somehow getting this thing, which literally weighs one ton, off the pallet. So, here's the plan. I'm gonna stick two of these under here, and then we'll put some blocks under here. And now, we should be able to lift this entire thing up and place these under here. These are glued together, by the way. And now hopefully we can drop it on the two by sixes. And now we should be able to take one of these out and drop it slowly back down. So far so good, let's see if we can take another one. Oh, almost, we need something thing. So let's see if we can lift one side at a time. So I'm now hoping that I can wedge it up and then take out the two front. Pang! And now the last two. And she's officially on the ground. Woo! <laughs> Look at how massive my workshop looks now. Okay, I might be cheating a little bit. It's a very wide angle lens. And now to the big lathe. Okay, so just like they built the pyramids, huh? Okay, bandsaw. Pikachu will have to stay over here for a while. Please don't fall on my computer. Please don't fall on my computer. As all the machines moved, 
I'm going home. See you guys tomorrow. Okay, it's a new day. We just carried in a bunch of materials. Let's get rid of all of this stuff so we can start building a base for our new office area. Alrighty, so the basic frame for our platform is done. Everything is attached to the walls, everything is square and level. I first started with using a laser level to make sure that the outer pieces here were nice and level relative to each other. And then I made these small little support legs to fit with the crooked floor here. Next up is to screw in a bunch more of these 2F4s as a base for the fiber boards that are gonna become the flooring. All right, let's get some flooring on this thing. So the flooring is done and it's all screwed down. I've also taped on this squishy sound absorbing layer. I probably don't need it, but it's on there anyways. I've already started laying the flooring with this first board here. It's the same clicky type stuff that we used in the kitchen and it just clicks together one board after another. On the first one, I trimmed off the clicky bit so that it will fit snug up against the wall. And I've also trimmed it to length. And now it should just be a matter of clicking in one board after another and I'll trim those off with a track saw. Okay, let's see how long this takes. Ready, set, go. Okay, I'll have to trim the last board, but that took two minutes, 40 seconds. So to finish up the edge of this floor here, I've cut a couple of strips of birch, which I've chamfered on three to sides. And to make them more durable and resistant to stains, I've given them a couple of coats of varnish. And we're gonna use this as the corner trim piece on the end of the floor here, not only to give it a nicer look, but also to give it a bit more of a durable edge, since I'm gonna be walking up and down this thing a lot. So we're gonna touch this with a bunch of glue and then some brand nails. <laughs> door as a temporary desk and it's super heavy. I have no idea why I'm using this. Uh. <sighs> now it's an office. <laughs> okay, I'll promise I'll make a new table in an upcoming video, but for now, let's make some boxes to use a storage solution underneath here. Okay. And we're of course gonna build those drawers out of my favorite material, MDF.
Okay, time to see if this huge thing actually fits. Oh, it's heavy at least. It rolls. <laughs> this works really well. Wonder are done, on to the next one. But hold on for just a second. You see, originally I wasn't planning on making a step here. I was just gonna have this entire height be one step. But then I put this drawer in here and ended up using this little ledge here as a step. It turns out it is kind of nice with an additional step. So I've decided to build an additional step on one of the drawers. No big deal though, we'll just use this drawer on that side and then for the second drawer we'll build a slightly larger base here so we can use that as a step. Here, let me show you. to work really well. I place the wheels directly underneath the step, that way all the loads goes into the wheels and not into the MDF. Unfortunately, that also means that the thing slides around a bit. So we'll have to fix that, we'll have to lock it in place somehow, as well as I want to make the step here look a little bit nicer. So we're basically going to do the same thing as we did up here, put some of this stuff on there. Unfortunately, I have run out of this stuff. Fortunately, the store sells sample boards that just so happen to fit perfectly. So I'm gonna use a few of these and then figure out the way to lock this thing in place. So our step here is basically finished. I still need to paint the parts that are MDF and install the locks that will keep it from sliding out when I walk up here. I was gonna install the second drawer in that hole now and start organizing stuff, but turns out all of that stuff is in the way of getting the drawer in. So we might as well take care of that now and we'll do that over here. So here over on this wall where the lid used to be, I think we'll have some material storage up against the wall here. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, just something functional to keep all the materials stored in one place. So I guess we'll just take care of that now. Okay, we've got a little box in place. It's securely mounted to the wall. The longer pieces are gonna slide in back here. We're gonna have some smaller pieces up here. And then the really long ones go on top here on these IKEA shelves. It's time to move the bandsaw to its final place. And finally, organize all that mess over there. Let's go. And Boom, just like that. Everything is stored away, organized nicely up against the wall here. And we're gonna pretend that was on purpose and not the fact that I forgot to hit record on the camera. So this actually worked out really well. I've got the bigger sheets of sheet material down here. And this is only for about half size to three quarter sized boards. The full boards I've got storage underneath our kitchen. The super long stuff is all the way out on the top. The shorter stuff is here. 
and then the medium-sized stuff is stacked on top of here. And the fact that everything is now neatly stored and organized on here means that we can finally install our last drawer. So let's go do that. With that, the storage system underneath our office area is finished. All the covering boards are painted. We've got nice trim on all the surfaces. And are you ready to see how much storage is underneath here? Let me show you. Just look at all of the stuff that I can store here now. So underneath here, I basically put everything that I don't use that often. Spare lamello biscuits, casting stuff, concrete, coal, bunch of skateboards for maybe an upcoming project. So this really saves a ton of space on my main storage wall, which we'll have a look at in just a second. And to hold this drawer in, I've just used one of these old school window latches and it pulls the drawer in nicely and now we can't go anywhere. Okay, so I know we've been jumping around a whole lot between different projects around the workshop. And that's why I want to give you the grand tour of the entire workshop, starting with our office area. So this is, as you've already seen, what the finished office area with storage underneath ended up looking like. <laughs> Which right now doesn't look like much. I mean, I'm still losing a couple of sawhorses and an old door as my office desk. So, but looking back at what we started with, we used to have a bandsaw right here, which is now just open space. Okay, but enough about the office space. Let's continue around the workshop. So what used to be just a big pile of random assortment of materials stuck in a corner in a very unorganized way is now my little machining corner. We've got the bridge port finally down from its pallet and we've got the lid right next to it. So all the metalworking is contained in one area. And since the lid is now placed sticking into the room like this, it's much easier to film stuff I do on the lathe. And to finish things off and make it a bit more comfortable to stand and work at these machines for a long period of time, I took this old like protective floor covering that I got from one of the neighbors and cut it to this, what I think is a pretty nice looking shape. Okay, moving on. And this area really has a ton more space now. The big messy table that we had here is all cleaned up. I trimmed off a whole bunch of it because I don't really need a super deep table. That's just gonna end up with a bunch of mess on it. So made the table a bit shorter, gave me a lot more floor space. All the stuff that was on here is now organized in boxes, either on this wall or underneath our office area. And they were sold out of these hangers at Ikea, so I had to borrow a few of the ones that I had here to get all the wood organized up against the wall over here. This area you've already seen, this is where I've got all my wood. There's a nice space for my drill press underneath here. We've got the tracks for my tracks up against the wall so they're easily accessible. And one more thing which I haven't shown you yet is what I did with the bandsaw here. So since I'm trying to minimize the amount of dust that floats around in the workshop, not only because of my computer, but also because of all the machine tools I have in here. So I've got a vacuum that is permanently hooked up to the bandsaw that goes through this little 3D printed dust cyclone, which is just a smaller version of the one that we have in the big dust extractor build that I have two videos on. So that separates out the dust from the bandsaw. And if you want to print your own, I'll leave a link to where I downloaded this model from. And the vacuum is hooked up right underneath the start button to the saw. So I can start the vacuum and the saw from the same place. No need to plug in anything else. And I'm using this little space that was left over between the power outlet and the material storage to store my charges for my batteries. And with that, that basically sums up this workshop reorganization remodel cleanup video. <laughs> I am so happy with the way this has turned out. I feel like there's so much more space in the workshop now. And hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and maybe you even got some good ideas for organizing your own workshop. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It actually makes a huge difference if you do. I don't usually make videos about reorganizing my workshop. Normally I build stuff or restore stuff. So if you want to watch some of those videos, maybe you can do that right here. 
So until next time, thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe if you're not yet and ring that bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.